Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for this event focused on state support for individual learning plans. My name is Helen Duffy, and I will be your host and facilitator for today's webinar. We have a great panel of presenters gathered today who will share uh, not only the, the research base for individual learning plans, but also one state's vision for what they call uh, their student success plans. And we have two, uh, we have representatives from two states who are gonna share their implementation journeys. Our presenters today include uh, Dr. Scott Solberg, who is a professor at Boston University, where he teaches courses in counseling, urban education, and research methods. Lisa Tyler, who's the Director of Student Support Services for the Arkansas Department of Education. Dr. Greg Curtis, a school counseling education consultant and co-lead for suicide prevention at the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Robin Russell, a graduation guidelines manager at the Colorado Department of Education and Andy Tucker, who is the Director of Post-Secondary and Workforce Readiness at the Colorado Department of Education. We'll have two 10-minute Q&A sessions, uh, one between uh, Lisa and Greg, and the other at the end of uh, Colorado's presentation uh, after Robin and Andy uh, share their journey. Um, so be sure to jot your questions down or put them in the in the chat box. So today's event is hosted by the Regional Education Lab Southwest. And as you might know, regional ed labs uh, conduct their work in partnership with the states that they serve. And here at Rail Southwest, um, we work in partnership with education stakeholders in the five states in our region, Arkansas, Louisiana, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas to address identified priorities and interests of our five states. We work to support eight collaborative research alliances. These are the research alliances uh, that REL Southwest currently supports. And uh, today's presentation is uh, focused on our partnership with Arkansas um, that uh, addresses college and career readiness. Um, we're working now uh, to support the implementation of uh, Arkansas student success plans. And today's event, this webinar, is uh, kind of a foundational activity um, and is just one of several that we plan to engage in together with Arkansas. Today's goal um, is to look at individual learning plans, which are promising tools that help students and their parents or guardians be more intentional about course taking and pathways to a range of post-secondary options. And because more and more states are turning to individual learning plans as a strategy to support college and career readiness, we're offering this bridge event in partnership with Arkansas. Our webinar outcomes today are first to uh, become more aware of the research base and evidence that support individual learning plans, gain a better understanding of state systems for supporting their implementation, and learn about the successes and challenges and lessons learned from states that have uh, implemented those plans. Um, don't forget, uh, we'll have a stakeholder feedback survey at the end of our webinar today, and I just want to um, say that these, these feedback um, opportunities are very important to us, uh, so they help us improve our, our work and uh, improve future presentations. As Marguerite mentioned, um, our webinar today includes closed captioning. Um, you can follow the directions to set up the closed captioning. And if you have any technical issues, uh, let us know in the chat box and someone can assist you. 
And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Solberg, who is a, a national and international uh, expert on the design, implementation, and evaluation of effective career development programs and services, especially for high-need youth. And he presents regularly on the nature and promise of individual learning plans. So we're happy, uh, Scott, to have you with us today. It's all yours. Great. Okay. All right. So you can hear me okay then? Yes, we can. All right. Excellent. So thank you, everyone. It's wonderful to have a chance to uh, present today. Um, I'm going to do a, I've got a, a short window, so I'm going to give a sampling of some of the research uh, that we're using to kind of provide the knowledge base. Um, from a IES perspective, the, the knowledge base that we have rises to the level of promising practice. For those that might be looking for more experimental evidence, we're waiting. Um, that's probably the next step in our frontier. Uh, the research that I'm going to be talking about was um, funded by the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy um, through a, um, a TA center contract to the Institute for Educational Leadership, specifically National Collaborative on Workforce and Disability for Youth. Um, there's a website, and we'll hopefully get a link up for you all. That you, oh, it's already there. Thanks, Joni. Um, this is a nice website where we've put a lot of the material that we'll be referring to today. Um, and just to kind of get us started, what I want to do is give you an example, a, a case sample, to help us understand what the ILP is, what it's about, and recognize that a lot of the, uh, the more story making is actually we have lots of research to back up um, some of these points. And so the first, the, the case I want to share is one that came from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, about a young student. Um, she was uh, from the Latin American Latina. Um, she was first generation. Uh, college student, um, and she was from a low-income background. And one of the things that made her um, an interesting case study was that when school started, she was just not engaged in um, in the academics, the math, the science, and she was probably about the bottom third uh, when it came to, to the high school rating uh, ranking. But what happened was through the ILP process, and in Wisconsin they call it the Academic Career Plan, ACP, um, as she was going through the process and got interested in, the, in a class on biotechnology, she realized that the hospital setting seemed to have a lot of exciting work opportunities. And she went into the online career information system that they had at the time, um, which is a very important part of the ILP process to have access to career information system. She found that she could actually become a dietitian aide and start working in the hospitals even as a high school student. And so. The summer between sophomore and junior year, she went to, to, the, to the local college, got her certificate, started working in the hospital, enjoyed it, continued looking at the different career possibilities, um, started looking at different other opportunities that would come, came back to school that junior year and started taking more of the science and more of the math courses, and in fact, um, took many more of those courses, plus went into back to the college to, take a, um, to gather 10 additional credits before she graduated. She, she um, decided she wanted a career in nursing. Um, she received a full scholarship at one of the local state colleges for that. Um, and and this, is, this is the kind of thing that we're hearing repeated throughout the country, that once students start setting career and life goals, they start thinking about the academic plans differently, and they start choosing into a more rigorous course, um, a course schedule. They start looking at post-secondary, and we're talking two and four year, and this case media was accepted into a four year, but we're also talking about the two year and four year as, a, as, a, as both viable, important options. Um, and it, what it comes down to is that as they are engaged in thinking about themselves, their skills, their interests, their values, and how those can align with different career opportunities, uh, we start to find that the whole idea of proving their career readiness um, actually drives the college readiness, that they, they will move towards um, an academic plan that's going to be more rigorous uh, and more aligned to those post-secondary pieces. Um, as far as the kind of the nature, as we studied um, schools around the country, we did a more intensive look at 14 high schools in four states, but this has been replicated as we've worked with other states around the country, including, as you see, Wisconsin, is the messaging. What is the nature of this whole process? Unlike math and unlike um, science, you know, physics, where there's a textbook and there's a clear understanding of what the subject matter is, when we start talking about ILPs, 
we really aren't clear on what it is to begin with. And so we have to both explain the nature of what this is along with the value. And so what you see in this poster is a beautiful, um, very quick summary and key points um, that we're finding in research is what this whole um, ILP process is about. The first is that it's student-driven. Very important. We're not talking about a lecture. We're not talking about explaining to them. We're talking about them finding on their own through both encouraging adult conversations and explorations, as well as the use of online systems. So both classroom opportunity experiences. It looks like we just had some audio issues with Scott right now. Um, we're going to figure this out in just one second. Um, so if you'll just bear with us for a moment, um, hopefully we'll be able to get right back on track. So just hold on one moment. Hi, everybody. While we figure out the audio for Dr. Solberg, I'll just introduce myself quickly. My name is Greg Curtis. I'm the education consultant for school counseling <clears throat> and the academic and career planning co-lead here in Wisconsin. We really appreciate the fact that Scott um, is sharing part of our story and part of our vision, especially because it aligns so fundamentally with the, the idea of what an individual learning plan is. Here in Wisconsin, you noticed in the in the uh, the poster that, that Scott was showing, we are really focused on the fact that this isn't necessarily about the plan. This is about the planning, and all of the the bullets that you noticed all had to do with some some actionable pieces, not what's written on the paper, but the actionable pieces. The relationship between a caring adult and a student, the fact that it's student driven with adult guidance. Your opportunities uh, and being able to, um, uh, okay, Greg, you got it. Got your cutting in and out a little bit. Am I? Okay. Let me, uh, okay, let me try this. Is this better? There you go. You sound terrific. All right. Did you fill in for me or are we still on? You're still on. Go right Go right ahead. Pick up where you left off. I'll tell Wisconsin's uh, story in just a little bit. Okay. Sorry about that. So the family experiences, um, the school starts focusing on raising children, not just getting the good test scores. So we hear a lot of the schools now focused on how are we going to help get through the post-secondary process, this post-secondary degree, not just getting them to graduate or through high school. So that's an exciting um, piece that's happening. What I'm showing now is the more complex um, correlational study, again, helping us provide some more evidence towards ILPs being a promising practice. Um, in this case, we get access to quality learning experiences that are centered around the ILP. Students feel more confident in the career search process. They start setting goals, and all of a sudden, they're attending school because it's meaningful and enjoyable, as well as building their academic self-efficacy, and then all of a sudden, we see the school counselor model of trying to focus on academic improvements, focusing on career readiness, as well as managing social emotional distress. All that appears to be happening through, um, through this process, which is very exciting. And the, a more easier way to think about it is when we, and this is again all based on the data, that when um, students report that they're engaging in quality ILPs, they're, they're setting goals. They're those kind, and these goals can be anything. They're short-term goals. How am I going to get what done? And thinking about what I need to be improving upon. And then they want to come to school. They find that the academic courses they're taking are relevant. And then we're seeing through academic self-efficacy um, all of these improved outcomes. So different ways we can kind of share and translate those results. Another piece we did 
was we took a qualitative study to see as we find students who are becoming career ready. So these are students that are um, actively engaged in finding out who I am, finding about the world of work, and beginning to establish career and life goals. These students were differentiated from those who would just give us a title. They'd say, oh, I'm going to college, or oh, I'm um, going to be a veterinarian. But they had no exploration behind it. They had no clear sense of who they were and, and any really knowledge about the careers. So those who were becoming more career ready, they had higher academic self-efficacy. They were, they were better in terms of decision-making readiness as well as um, they were managing their health and, and their, their stress better. They were, um, and they were more motivated to go to school. So what we're finding is that this career readiness is driving some of these critical social-emotional learning skills, and that this is, this is an important element that we're finding um, that we certainly were hoping to find, uh, but we're pretty shocked to see just how much of a differentiation there was uh, when students are involved in this um, IELTS process. Um, what does it look like when we say a student is like becoming career ready, that the ILP is working? Um, these are based on our, based on our, our um, we did a bunch of qualitative work. We had over a thousand participants in it. And when we, when we looked at the results to see who these students look like, what, is, what are the, the key dimensions of becoming um, college and career ready, we found that they, they had plans. And this is what we mean by established career and life goals, right? That they have more than one, it's plural. Um, they could clearly describe what these career and life goals were about. Um, they could talk about them. They could tell us the, the way their skills aligned with those, the way their, their, their past values interests are, are aligning. They were actually outgoing and finding work-based learning and volunteer experiences in order to um, facilitate that. So, so what we're finding is that these, these different dimensions are things that we can measure. These are things that we can look at as a summit of assessment each year um, by asking some key open-ended questions and then being able to look at their self-narrative um, and seeing if they're getting there. So this is an exciting piece that we felt was important for future measurement when we go to look at what it means to become career ready. Um, and then this is one of our theory of change we've come up with after we've summarized um, the, the piece, that the quality ILP implementation from a caring and encouraging adult, that's the key, that when we're, when we're engaged in these career development activities that have classroom experiences or group conversations, plus they have um, this, this um, access to the caring, encouraging adult that's facilitating it, what we see happening is that now the youth are starting to think about themselves and starting to establish career and life goals. And once they do, all of a sudden they see these learning opportunities as relevant to helping them pursue those goals. Um, they start looking for work-based learning and other kinds of rigorous academic ed education. So in the Mia case, she was going to the two-year college to gather some credits and to gather the credentials that she needed. Um, and as a result, then, we're seeing all of these positive youth development outcomes coming. And so we're not just talking about grades. We're not talking about test scores. We're talking about a positive youth development focus where these youth are creating a success identity where they're now prepared as they, can, as they prepare to leave the high school setting, they have a plan, and they're entering that post-secondary set of opportunities with a clear purpose. Um, and that's sort of what we're, we're believing is the strongest um, piece about that. Uh, we've got some books out, and I know I'm out of time, so I'm going to let this go, but we do have a few things on there and, and some contact information. So I'll step off. Apologize for the phone, but um, hopefully we got both of that through. Thank you, Scott, and uh, thanks, Greg, for helping jump in uh, when we lost Scott for, for a few minutes. Uh,